Hey, it's Thursday. Thanks for joining us. On today's episode, we're going to talk about piracy. If there's anything that we can do to help you out, or if you have questions uh, about this episode or any of the episodes that we do, uh, be sure to reach out to us. Our website is linked below in the comments section, but you can reach out to us uh, through that, through our social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, and at imsa.global. So today, um, as I said, we're gonna be talking about maritime piracy. And the reason that we decided to discuss this topic today um, is over the past few weeks, we've seen an uptick in piracy off the coast of Somalia. Um, if you remember back in 2007, 2008, is when uh, piracy in that area really started to move to the forefront. Um, we had the Maersk, Alabama was a very uh, well-publicized pirate attack here in the United States. Um, there were a number of attacks over the scope of the past 10 years. There have been thousands of seafarers' lives who've been negatively affected, um, damage to vessels, loss in cargo. So this is a multi, multi hundred million dollar problem, and it looks like it's starting to come back in Somalia. So we thought we would talk a little bit about it today. And the purpose of these episodes is really not to cover a particular topic in great detail, but just to give you some points to think about, to be able to give you a little bit of a foundation to go and research. Uh, the different laws or guidelines or uh, resolutions that we mentioned in the video, um, we will try to link those down below in the comment section uh, for you as well. To start out, I always like to talk a little bit about uh, the laws and the regulations side and where you can find more information uh, that talks about a particular topic. Uh, with maritime piracy, it's a bigger and broader part of the category of maritime safety and security. So one of the areas that you can look is in the ISPS codes or the International Ship and Port Facility Security Codes. You can look in uh, ISM or the International Safety Management Code, which is all kind of part of the SOLAS regulations under the International Maritime Organization. There's a couple of other areas that provide reference on um, piracy and how to deal with piracy. Um, and I'm just going to read through a couple of these fairly quickly. You have the United uh, Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and Articles 100 through 107 um, are the articles that typically deal with maritime piracy. Now, it's not really specific to vessels or masters of the vessels, but more along the lines of, of uh, international navies and law enforcement organizations and countries and flag states on, on how to deal with piracy. There's also a slew of UN Security Council regulations uh, or resolutions. Some of these resolutions are still in force. Uh, some of them have been changed and updated. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but you have them starting basically in 2008 with uh, UN Security Council Resolution 18 1816 and then going forward uh, from there. So it's 1816, 1838, 1844, 1846, 1851, 1897, 1918, 1950, 1976, and 2015. So those are some of the major UN Security Council resolutions that deal with maritime piracy. There's another convention that you can get information on. It's the Convention on the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Maritime Navigation, or the SUA Convention. And some of these we will, again, detail um, with links in the comments section listed below. There's really five topics in this video that we want to discuss to really Try to help the masters and crews of different vessels when it comes to getting your mind around piracy and maritime security. If you look from a statistical standpoint, the chances of a maritime piracy or maritime security incident are fairly low. But you want to make sure if you're transiting through higher risk areas of the world, where these hot spots are located, whether it's off the coast of Somalia, off the west coast of Africa, um, or in the South China Sea, Malacca Straits, you wanna make sure first and foremost that you have a plan. This doesn't need to be um, in a huge binder full of multiple pages, tabs, and references. You wanna have a plan, a plan that's workable, a plan that your crew members will be able to understand and execute for a maritime security or maritime piracy incident. One of the recommendations that I sometimes make to clients, depending on the type, size, and operation of the vessel, is to have a maritime security or piracy plan incorporated as part of your watch quarter and station bill. 
You wanna make sure that every crew member on board understands what their responsibilities are if you do have to activate and execute that plan. And people who have planned and understand and have trained those plans have a much greater possibility of a positive outcome from a maritime security or piracy incident. So number one is the plan. And put something together that's workable and that's common sense and that everybody can understand and very easily execute. Number two, you want to understand real-time intelligence. You want to have great situational awareness. Wherever you are in the world, you want to understand what are some of the things that are going on around me, um, whether you're in or outside of a hotspot. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of good tools for vessels currently to be able to provide information on real-time intelligence. Little commercial for us here at IMSA, we're currently actually working on a software platform that we call ARMS, which stands for the Automated Risk Management Solution. And this platform will provide real-time risk intelligence and information that's all geolocation specific to vessels at sea. So stay tuned for that as we roll that platform out later this year. We'll have uh, more information and updates on that. And it's really to help the mariners be able to understand very rapidly what's going on around them in real time. So intelligence is part of that. Number three is once you have a plan and understand the intelligence and where you're going and what you're doing is to make sure that you train your crew members on that particular plan. It's great to have a plan, it's great to have situational awareness, but you need to train on the plan and make sure that all the crew members understand their specific duties and responsibilities to carry out during a piracy incident or a maritime security incident. Number four, this is an item that we've covered in a previous video, um, but we're gonna expand on a little bit of it here. And it's the carriage of weapons on board the vessel and security teams. If you'll look again in the comment section below, we'll have a link to our previous video where we talked about carrying weapons on board vessels. Here we want to talk a little bit about security teams. Security teams can be very useful resources for vessels that transit through high risk areas that may be on the scale of having a higher probability of attack. However, when you look at security teams, there's a lot of companies that do this, but there's not a lot of companies that are experts in doing this. So you want to make sure that you vet and go through and understand the experience in the background of the company that you hire to put armed security personnel on your vessel to transit through these areas. A lot of times I tell people that if you're paying a low bottom basement price, that's probably what you're gonna get in a team. And if you have questions on that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're happy to help you with that. We don't provide that particular service, but we have a, a relationship and an understanding of some of the bigger players in the market who are quality people and quality companies who provide that service. And then the last item, um, it's common sense. It's really the responsibility of not only the captain, but every crew member on board to be ready and be prepared once that vessel goes to sea. Whether it's a maritime security incident, it's a piracy incident, it's safety of life at sea incident, everybody needs to be ready. It's really everybody's responsibility to know and to understand how and what they need to do to execute. I hope that this is just a flare up that's happening off the coast of Somalia and we're not gonna see widespread piracy, but make sure whether you're a cargo line, a cruise line, or a large yacht, that you really think through your operations, your plans, your procedures, and know what it is that you can and can't do. Understand your capabilities when it comes to maritime security incidents and piracy. Thanks for joining us on this uh, Thursday Maritime Video Blog episode. If you have any questions about the topic of piracy or any other maritime related topics, please don't hesitate to post your comments, questions here below in the comments section of the YouTube video. Connect with us on social media through Facebook, uh, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, um, and post your questions there. We want to dedicate one episode um, every couple of months to viewer questions, so make sure you post questions to us. If there's specific questions that you have about maritime security regulations, uh, maritime security compliance, flag state compliance, don't hesitate to reach out to us through our website at imsa.global. Thanks for joining us on this episode today and be sure to tune in next Thursday when we will have a brand new episode on a great maritime related topic.